And now to the cloud. Workday reporting another strong quarter as it pushes further into Europe. I sat down with CEO Anil Busri to check in on everything from tech valuations and consolidation to the progress Workday is making in its financials vertical. Take a listen. The marketplace for financials is about twice the size of the HR market, so we're very excited about the prospects. Now, on the earnings call, your CFO said you could be profitable if you wanted to be, but you're going to focus on growth. Why focus on growth now in this current climate, lots of market volatility? You know, our, our business is a once-in-a-decade transition. We went through the shift from mainframe to client server back in the Back in the 90s, you saw the growth of PeopleSoft and SAP and Oracle. We're in that once in a decade shift again, and it's basically a land grab for, for market share. So let's talk about those legacy competitors. Oracle and SAP seem to be getting a lot more aggressive, and they spend more on marketing than Workday and Salesforce combined. How do you defend against that? We continue to differentiate on two things, on products and customer success. Of our 1,000 customers now, we've passed 1,000. 70% are in production and uh, we're running at about a 95% customer satisfaction level. When it comes to enterprise software, obviously you've got such a long history in this business, having founded PeopleSoft, we've talked about the established competitors, then you have the up and comers like Slack, like Quip, they all want a piece of this market. You know, where do you see this going and how do you as a public company now stay nimble enough to compete against all of that? For us, we stay very close to the startup world. We just introduced Workday Ventures. So we actually make small investments in small companies. I still hang out with my buddies at Greylock to see what's coming down the pike. And internally, we still organize around small teams. Because of your work at Greylock, you also are dialed into what's happening on the private as well as the public side. But what do you think about the market volatility? I, I don't worry about it very much because I don't, I don't think we're on the verge of a financial collapse. I think at the end of the day, if you focus on building a great company, Stock prices follow revenue and earnings growth. You just have to look, take the long-term perspective. I do think there's been a disconnect between the private markets and the public markets. The public markets for tech companies have been pretty rational for a long period of time. The private markets have been less so rational, and, and maybe with these corrections, the, the two will come closer together. So what does the shakeout look like on the private side? I mean, do you see down rounds? Do you see delayed IPOs? Both. And I see a lot more in the way of merger and acquisition activity. There's, there's quite a few interesting properties out there that folks like Salesforce and Workday would like to acquire, and the prices have been too high, and maybe with this correction, they become more attractive. So what areas are you interested in? Always interested in, in core technologies. I'd probably say the biggest areas around analytics. Uh, and then as people move into the world of industry-specific applications, that could be another area of interest for us. In looking at a lot of these recently public tech companies, you've got Twitter flirting with its IPO price, Box below its IPO price, Etsy, Lending Club. What does it say about the health of the Valley that a lot of these newly public tech companies just aren't doing well? I, I think you have to separate out how their stock prices are performing right now versus how the companies are doing. Uh, you know, I'm familiar with Box. They continue to grow their business. So we talked about M&A when it comes to smaller companies. Salesforce, for example, there's been a lot of chatter about Salesforce selling out to someone big time. What's your take on that? You'd have to ask Mark. Uh, you know, Mark's a good friend. We talk about how we, our two companies partner together. Uh, I'm not privy to know what's happening. Uh, to me, he seems very committed to building a great business, and he's been a great partner for us. So there's also been chatter about Workday selling to Microsoft. How would you address that? Uh, first of all, we don't comment on those, on those sorts of rumors, but we are very focused on building an independent company for the long run. And just last question, you know, as, you know, as someone who lived through 99, has founded multiple companies and seen a lot of shakeouts, what do you think we're seeing right now? I mean, the term bubble is thrown around, but it just seems, it just seems to not accurately reflect what's going on. Yeah, I, I don't think there has been a public, public market bubble. Uh, if you look at the valuations in tech, they might, they might be a little bit higher than historical levels, but that's largely because of low interest rates. But if you look at the workday trading ranges on multiple basis, it's not that different than Salesforce at the same size six or seven years ago. So uh, the, the bubble happens in the, or has happened in the private markets. And that will have to sort itself out. I don't think it'll have a big impact on the public markets, but the, the, there is a bubble in, in the private markets. And when you have to take a company public or you have to sell it, then you get you get mark to market, and then we'll find out how much of a bubble there was. So then will it look like 99? Not to the same extent. Uh, and the people mostly impacted will be venture capitalists, uh, late stage investors, not, not the public market, where 
in 99, 2000, the public market was really impacted and that sent the, sent the markets and the economy into a tailspin. I don't see that happening this time around.